Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayemi, a brand in Masechta, Maseches Tamura. We begin at the Mishnah on Daf Beis Amaral. Says the Mishnah, Kol Mimirin. All have the ability to make a Tamura. Now what is a Tamura? Let's take a look at the Rashi on the top line. Hakol Mimirin says Rashi, Behemas Chulun Zu, Tachas Zushel Hekdesh. So he has a carbon animal in front of him, an oila, a shlamim, for example, and he says, look, that other animal, which is not Kaddish, should be instead of this one. So he's basically trying to exchange one for the other. Now, in reality, that will not happen. So even though the Tmura process is somewhat going to take effect, somewhat successful, if you will, but not the way he intended it. You can't really exchange, you can't really transport the, the um, Kedusha from the Karm over to the other one. At most, you can also add Kedusha to the next one. So, literally, the, the meaning of Tamura in our context isn't really an exchange, rather, that's what he's trying, that's what he's attempting, but in reality, what's going to happen is that there'll be some sort of expansion or extension, so the Kedusha will spread over onto that uh, number two as well. Hakal Mimirun. All have the ability to make it tomorrow. Whether it's men, women, Echod Anoshim, Bechod Noshim. Now, Loisha Adam Rashi Lahomer, now that we're giving a license to do it. In fact, the, the Pasuk says you're not allowed to. Tinker with the Kedusha of the Kerb, you're not allowed to even attempt a tomorrow. Rather, what we mean is that it works. Eloshahim Hamer. Rather, if he did it, if he declared, you know, Zu Tachas Zu, Mumar. It takes effect. It becomes a tmura, as Rashi says on the second line, the mat v'salo kedusha. So the kedusha gets applied onto the number two as well, ushtein kedushas, and they're both kedush. We have the original and the copy. Shem heimer hum humor. However, v'seifeg esar boyim. He'll be treated to forty lashes, to forty malkas, thirty-nine, right? Because he violated the law. Of Layachli Fen of Lo Yomir Oisei, and I meant to do. Says the Gemara, Hoga Fakasha. In the literal wording of the Mishnah, we seem to have a, a contradiction. We begin, Amris, we start, Hakol Mimir, which sounds like Lechat Chilo. It's something recommended, something you're meant to do. Bahada Tony. Then it says, Of course not, Loisha Adam Rashi Lohamir, which indicates that it's only the Evet. Right? So first you say Lechat Chilo, then you say the Evet. If it's done, it's done, but you shouldn't do it. So, how do we learn the year of the Mishnah? Vitispra, now according to you, how could you even suggest, Hakol Mimirin is suggested, you're allowed, you're allowed to do it tomorrow? Forget the, uh, aside from the Mishnah, the Pasik warns against doing this. Adikashlan Masnis, instead of just asking within the Mishnah, part 1 versus part B, Tikshilach Kro, what about the Pasik? Which clearly disallows making it more dechsiv. So how do we understand the opening statement of the Mishnah? Hakol Mimir. El Amarvid Hagitan. The Mishnah means like this: not that it's allowed, but that you have the power to do so if you choose. Hagitan. Hakol Matfis and Betmura all can affect a Betmura. Echad Anoshim, Echad Anoshim. Loish Adam Rashi Lahamer. After which the Mishnah comes hastily back to clarify what it meant. Not that it's allowed. We're not allowed. We're not giving you a green light to do it. We're just telling you that you have the power to do so, if you should so wish. El Hashem Eimer. More, if he did so, it works. But of course, he gets punished with Seifeg Sarbon. Now, when it says Hakoya, which is an inclusive term, an expansive term, who else is it coming to include? Something which isn't so you know obvious on the surface. Who's it coming to include in terms of the ability to make it Yerish To include even a Yerish inheritor. Rashi says. Around 10, 12 lines from the top. Yerish means Shehemer Bukharban Shehfresh of Bachayev Shtmurasay Tmura. What happened was his father had a carbon. He passed away. Now his son inherits that carbon. He has to process it and bring it to the race of He's considered enough, you know, the owner to the extent that he can make it tomorrow. 
But like Rabbi Yudu, unlike Rabbi Yudu, disagrees, who excludes a Yerish from making a Tmura on his father's carbon, the Snan or the Sanya, but Braiser, Yerish, yes, yeah, he can make Smicha, which means leaning on the carbon before the Akrava, which is something unique to the owner. He leans on the carbon, he confesses, he sort of transfers his own value into the carbon, it's like the carbon representing him, it's a very personal experience. Only the owner, and even the Yerish, who is deemed the new owner. He like, you know, steps into his father's shoes and can now do the uh, smicha on the, uh, the carbon as well. By the way, the version point out, it's not limited to a son, any sort of Yerush, any family member who's the official formal heir. So he takes over the process, he can do the smicha, Yerush can do the tamura as well, Meimer, Tevira Meir. Rabbi Yudah disagrees, Rabbi Yudah Meir, Yerush, Enoi Saimich, unless you're the actual original owner, you can't do the smicha. The Yerush, likewise, cannot do the tamura, Enoi Meimer, he's not the original owner. My time with Rabbi Yudah, where's he coming from? Why are we excluding the Yerush regarding smicha and tamura? Answer is, She's going to learn something which happens at the onset of the Hegdish, at the initiation of the Hegdish, which in this case refers to the Tmura process, which initiates Kedusha, even though it's really a copy of the original. But in terms of this carbon, it's the start of the Hegdish. So we learn the Allah of Tmura, Misoyf Hegdish, from an element pertaining to the conclusion of the Hegdish, the end of the process, which is a Smicha which occurs at the end of the life of the carbon before the Akrova, we compare the two. And we say, Ma'asayv Hegdish, just like at the very end, i.e. the Smicha process, Yerish Eino Yusoymich, that doesn't apply to a Yerish, how do we know? We'll see in a minute. So just like the Yerish is excluded from that, after Chilas Hegdish, Yerish Eino Yusoymich, likewise, Tamur, which takes place at the beginning of the process, does not apply to a Yerish. Ooh, Smicha, go from Minolan, and for the obvious question, how do we know that a Yerush is excluded from doing smicha on the father's carbon, plus a carbonic sivi. We have the word carbonai, his carbon, mentioned three times in the context of the shlamim. Carbonai is an exclusionary term, only his Qualify, qualifies for smicha. So the three miyutim. Chad, carbonai, one is his, requires smicha, but like not the carbon of a guy. So although a carbon of a guy is a valid carbon, as we learned many times, a, car, a, car, a guy has the ability to donate a carbon, but it's going to be smicha free. One pasuk is to exclude his friend's carbon, so even amongst two yidin, Reuven and Shimon, Shimon can't do smicha on Reuven's carbon, it has to be the actual owner doing it. The third carbon is to exclude our case, carbon of it. So Yerush cannot do it on behalf of the father. Okay, so here we go. That's Rebuda's pasuk. To disallow the Yerush from doing Tumura. Because we have the Pasuk to exclude him from Smicha, and we compare Tumura to Smicha. Ulurab Meir, the Amma Yerush, Soimich, the Oxiv, a Karbonai. Now, according to Rab Meir, a Yerush is allowed to do Smicha. What about this exclusion, this word Karbonai? Oh, homie, by the way, that's for something else. Lurabi, that's needed. Lurabi is called Bali Chuvin, the Smicha. They teach us that when you have a joint carbon with multiple owners, they all have to go and personally do their smicha. You can't have one fellow on behalf of the whole crew. Karbana, it's personal. Each individual on his own. So the word karban is needed for that. Unavailable to exclude a Yerush. Not Rabbi Yudah, who used karban to exclude a Yerush. How does he know this halacha? That each individual has to do the smicha. You're right, he disagrees. But the and the smicha, this requirement to have all the owners do smicha, let's say he disagrees. My time a while. Yalom yachet, karban to do. He says that in this case, since it's not specific to any person, it belongs to the collective group here, so as Rashi learns, there's no smicha at all, because smicha is specific to a privately owned carbon. This is a, a jointly owned carbon. It's sort of communal. It's a it's a collective carbon, there's no smicha at all. Bibai say, Maloyu Mislay. On the other hand, we could say, Rabbi agrees that even this collective carbon requires smicha to be done by each person separately. 
So back to the question, if one Pasuk, one mentioning of Karbani is used for this, so now we're short, one Pasuk, to exclude the um, Yerush. The answer is he'll condense the other two halachas and have them learn from the same Pasuk, which again frees a, a Pasuk, frees up a Pasuk for exclusion of the Yerush. The carbon of Kicham, the two halachas that we mentioned, this allowed the carbon of a guy from Smich, the carbon of and his friend, fellow Yid, it's really one on the same point. Machat Kornaf, let's learn from the same Pasuk, Rashi explains. It's really one on the same point. Karbonai means it has to be performed by the owner only. You can't have somebody do it on your behalf. Irrespective of whether it's a Yid for a Yid or a Yid for a guy. Now, Rashi does add that it's a known fact that the guy himself cannot do smicha. Rashi brings the Gemara Menachis. It says, by smicha b'nei Yisrael, it's only for a year. So that's out. The fact that a guy cannot do smicha on his own, that's simple. That's a very basic notion. The question was, what about the carbon of the guy? Does the carbon need smicha? Meaning, he'll do it on his behalf. Karbonai says, no, it has to be done personally by the owner. You can't do it on behalf of somebody else, be it a yid or a guy. So both halachas really enwrapped in the same pasuk. So now we have an extra pasuk. We have one pasuk karbonai available lebali chayvin lesmicha to instruct all the members of this joint carbon to do their smicha. Okay, so bottom line, we have a machlekes between a who says. That a Yerush cannot do Tamura, just as he can't do Semicha, versus Rameiro says a Yerush is in on both accounts. Now we have the Psukh and we explain how each one applies it. Now over to Rameiro. Rameiro, the Oma Yerush member. We explained why Rabida disallows a Yerush, Karbanai, as opposed to a Yerush. Now Rameiro says a Yerush can. How does he know that? My time, Amalach, the Pasuk, makes a reference to it. Imhamer Yamer. Imhamer Yamer is an extra word. Imhamer Yamer. Why that duplication? The Rabbis Hayyarish to allow even a Yerish to do Timura. So once that's established, Viol of Saif Hegdash, we turn to our base. Viol of Saif Hegdash, we tell us Hegdash, we'll compare the Smicha process, which occurs at the end of the process, to the Timura, which occurs at the beginning. Ma'at Chilas Hegdash Yerish Mamer, just like Timura, which occurs at the beginning, can be done by Yerish as well, as we just explained. Af Saif Hegdash Yerish Mamer, likewise, Smicha, which occurs at the end. Can be performed by a Yerush as well. Now, Rabbi Yudah, Yamer, Yamer, my Yavadle. Quote Rabbi Yudah, what does he do with the extra possible Yamer, Yamer? The answer is the Rabbi Seisha to include a woman, to give her the power to make a Tamura, if she should so wish to do. Well, with the sign, we have a price. Why would I think a woman is excluded? Because if you look at the, the wording of the Psukim, in reference to Tamura, we find it in a male. Tense. The Lashonis and the Psukim are male oriented. These are all Lashon Zachar. So perhaps only a Zachar can make a Tamura. What about a woman making a Tamura? A double Lashon tells you that even Isha can make a Tamura. Has a woman can make a Tamura? No, a woman can make a Tamura. No, a woman can make a Extra vav, vim, includes even an isha. Rabbi Yudah, vim Darish, Rabbi does not uh, expound on the vav, it's just a mode of expression. Now, all seem to need a, I mean, it's clear that all need a pasik to apply to more, even to a woman. Now, why would I think a woman is different? The fact is, Ben Rabbi Meir, Ben Rabbi, both, according to Rabbi and Rabbi time of the Rabbi Kroli isha. So clearly, it's only because of the Special pasuk that we allow the isha, we empower her to make the tumor. Hold the rabbi kroba. If not for this extra implication in the pasuk, I mean, I would think you have the tumor all lock you. So if she goes and makes a tumor, she's not going to get punished. And we didn't first explain. There's no malchus, and there's no tumor. She says, Lakya, 
She says again, Malchus, ve'im himiro, tamur sein tamur, it's not a tamur. So meaning, why isn't that baseline? Why isn't that understood? Why isn't that presumed? We know that a woman is included in all the Yisurim in the Torah. Any violation, any Yisur, applies equally to men and women. Likewise, the Tmura process, which is inherently a deviation. We have a halacha, a well-known rule, the Chaintan Rabbi Shmuel, Isha, Isha, man or woman, are equally accountable for their deviations. Kiyasa, Mekol Chata, Yisra, Adam, Hishva, Kos, the Pazak says, Chatos applies equally to all. Hishva cause there is equating. Hishva cause of Isha Lish Lukhalashabatera. They're considered equal regarding all matters of violations and transgressions and punishments and Isurim, including Tamura. So if the laugh, Loyach Lifenu do not make it applies equally to both, we assume the outcome as well. Which means that the Tamura does take effect, applies to her too. She has the power to do so. Says the Gemara, Istrich, there is a special need for a Pasuk to include a woman. Why am I the There's room to think. Hanamili. Oynesh, the Shavah ben Yachar ben When does this universal rule apply regarding a matter of violation and punishment that applies to individuals, to the community, if they should violate? So those matters, those halachas, apply equally to all genders. But here by Tamura, which is something unique that only applies to individuals. You know, a, a tzibur, a collective community cannot make Tamura. It only applies to a privately owned carbon, not a, a collectively, you know, community owned carbon. It's not a Einish which applies equally to all. It's not, we have a mission later on. Only a private person can make a Tamura. Not the uh, community, not the Shutfin. So, perhaps since it has that limitation, perhaps it would be limited to males only. Even if a woman tries, she won't get Malchus. It doesn't work. Kamash, when comes the Pasuk, a special Pasuk, that it applies equally to the Isha as well. Now comes an interesting child. What about an underage you know, child? Boy Rambarcham, Katan Maoshiyam. So have a cotton, not yet an adult. Can he affect tomorrow? Can he make a, an exchange? Hechidami, hey, how old is he? What are we talking about? Ilema, is he really young? The cotton shelo yigelo enes He hasn't yet arrived at the time frame called oinas nedarim, where he has the ability to make a vow, which is actually within a year of adulthood. Once he turns twelve, by a boy and eleven by a girl, they have the ability to express themselves and commit themselves in terms of a vow, special Allah regarding vows. And Hegdish, right? So he hasn't yet arrived at that point. He's under that age as well. There's no question that it doesn't work. He doesn't have the power to affect anything at this point. The Kivan Dakdushi Le'Alish, he can't even make an Hegdish. A proper carbon. Amur Amur Maimur, could you suggest that I'll make a Tamura? He can't generate Kedusha. El Kivan Boyle, the question would be if he's already at that point. Bekatam, he's underage, but Shehigil, and Sundarm, he's already at the point that he can make a vow. He's 12 years old. He understands where it's going, and right. shall we say? Given that Amar, since we learned elsewhere that although the pasuk speaks about an ish which sounds like an adult, matam leimar kiyafli neder. Why is the pasuk expressing like the kiyafli neder? It's coming to include even a twelve-year-old. Lerabis mufla samachlish. Yafli means he expresses, he understands. Yedei lahaflis. He could differentiate. He can draw distinction. He understands what's going on. He, he knows who it's going to. So even though it's not yet an ish, he's samachlish. He's within a year of adulthood. It works. The kachay kadosh. So his hagdish works. If he initiates a kadosh on a carbon, it works. So perhaps, just as he can make a proper hagdish, he can also generate it more. Maybe mida hagdish magdish. Since he can make it regular hagdish, perhaps amuriyami maybe he can make it more as well. Idim or no. A proper hekdash yet? Yes. But uh, a violation such as Tamura? No. Oidilma. Kiwan the law by Anshinu bit Tamura, since he's not yet accountable for his deeds. So, on the one hand, he has an element of adulthood, he can make a hekdash, but he's not yet accountable, he's not yet punished for doing an avarice. So, perhaps he's excluded from the whole parish of Tamura, which in itself is a violation, is a iser, and that doesn't pertain to him yet. Right? The Pasuk says, 
Don't do it, and if you do it, it takes effect, so perhaps it's a package deal. One who is accountable for his misdeeds. For the Ayna Shavlaich Lifenum, so at the same time, if he does that, it works, but it, uh, a cut, and perhaps not. In terms of life, now you feel tell me regarding this question. Cotton of it tomorrow, perhaps. Yeah. Even this cotton who is close enough to adulthood, who has some abilities of Hegdish, can make a tomorrow as well. So perhaps that's because, you know, he's eventually going to become an adult. He is eventually going to grow into full adulthood with the full consequences for his actions. So he has that sort of potential lying, you know, dormant within him. So, yeah. He can tap into that power. So that's regarding a cotton of a Yisrael. What about a guy? No question. Can a guy make a tumura? On the one hand, we can say, yeah, we say, the fact is he can make hagdish. As discussed earlier, he can donate a carbon. As we learned, the sign you went in the ish, ish. Why the ish, ish, the double lashen? Matavalayma ish, ish. Could have just said ish. Why? Repeat it. To include even a guy. The rabbis, es they can donate a carbon just like we do. Since he has that ability, perhaps he can make a tumor as well. Or perhaps, no, since he's not responsible, not accountable, he's not going to get punished for it. Likewise, if he does it, it doesn't work. It's a package deal. Your ability comes with accountability. So that's the question. is a The signing from my price. So he's going to focus on the second question regarding the guy. A carbon that a guy donated has unique limitations. You can't go ahead and use it for personal use, but it carries no me'ila consequences. There's no me'ila for one who uses it for personal you know, interests in terms of having to pay back more. The chaymesh and the carbon, that doesn't apply to a carbon of a guy. It's excluded from that. What other limitations apply as well? The ain't chayavan aleim mishum pigul nicer atami doesn't have the standard halachas of a regular carbon pigul nicer atami right pigul is where it was processed with the intent to feed it to the mizbeach or to the kaihanim beyond its expiry date nicer means the actual flesh was left behind its expiry time but tummy person who eats it when he's tummy all these you know halachas and consequences do not apply to the carbon of a goy and also a nice and tomorrow this carbon cannot generate it tomorrow. Then we be in Nasachim, and you meant to know that a guy who never brings along the Nasachim, the wines and all that with his carbon, Aval Karbanitar Nasachim, although the carbon itself requires Nasachim, we sponsor it from the you know, public coffer. Dear Rabbi Shim, I'm Rabbi Yesi, I disagree, Bekulan, I don't apply all these limitations. Bekulan, I'm Nirei Lahachmir, regarding all these halachis, I'm strict, I apply it equally to the carbon of a guy. Okay, we'll get to the reasons later. But Medvam Amur, when do we? Exclude the carbon of a guy from Meila because of his beach, by his regular, you know, carbon. Aval because of the kabbais, but if he donated to the building fund, regular donation to the treasury of the mizbeach of the hegdish malman, of course, it's Meila, despite it being the donation of a guy. Okay, end quote. At any rate, what does the Bryce tell us regarding tomorrow, which is topic of today's discussion? A nice in tomorrow, the carbon of a guy cannot generate a tomorrow. That's a pre- pretty clear cut confirmation. On our question, of course it can't. No, Viram Bar who had posed this question to begin with, he says, "No, no, no, no. Of course, I agree that if it's a carbon that a guy donated, that doesn't have the ability to make tomorrow. That was never up for discussion." I had no question if the guy designated a carbon on behalf of a guy to atone for a guy to, you know. That wasn't my question. Of course, there's no tomorrow. My question was as follows. So, in this case, certainly, because the guy, like we said, is not accountable for the whole tomorrow process, of course, in this case, there's no concept of tomorrow. My question was as follows. Big what happened was that a guy sponsored the carbon of a yid. So the question is, who do we focus on? The sponsor or the beneficiary? Who's a Yisrael? 
who's covered in the Tamura process. Basar Magdish has to look at the Magdish, the guy who the the donor. So there's no tour there. Or you basar mischaper as lina. Do we focus on the fellow getting the kapara from the curb? He's like the new owner. And if he's a yid, tamura applies. Asks the gemara, but that too can be resolved very easily. We have halacha from elsewhere that, in terms of a tamura, the owner is considered the one that's benefiting from the curb, not the one who actually donated it. Tifshalei with Rabbi Avo, we can clarify his question based on Rabbi Avo. Three alochis, one of which is related to us, the middle one. First of all, three alochis regarding you know, ownership and hegdish. One is, the magdish is moisif chaymish. So if you donate a carbon, you want to buy it back from the hegdish, you want to redeem it if there's a blemish. So it depends. If it's a stranger, he just pays the value. If it's the magdish, the original owner, he adds a fifth to the fee as well. That's specific to the magdish. But if he's going to redeem, let's say, a tmura, there's no fifth added. Okay, next. Um, oh, regarding uh, the ability to make a tmura, who makes the tmura? Is it Reuben who was Magdashit? Let's say Reuben was Magdashit on behalf of Shimon. The Shimon will get the kapara from this carbon. Who's considered the owner regarding generating a tmura? Which is something only the owner can do. Is it Reuben the donor or Shimon the Meschaper? is a tmura. Tmura is linked to the Meschaper. He's like the owner regarding tmura. So that should shed light on our question regarding the guy sponsoring the Yitzkarim, right? But first of all, number three, right? Another unrelated case, let's say, Shimon has, you know, a granary full of crop and Reuben decides to uh, do Tumura, Truma, not Tumura, Truma. We turn to the next time. Truma from his own personal uh, grain on behalf of Shimon's uh, granary. So it works. Tevesana Shalei. And the point is that the Tevesana belongs to Reuven, which means to say he has the benefit of favor, meaning he can choose the recipient since he's the one designating the, uh, sponsoring the, tr- the truma, despite the fact that it's on behalf of Shimon's cr- cranery. Okay, so bottom line, let's backtrack to the middle halach. Who's deemed owner regarding generating tumura? The meschaper, the beneficiary. So back to our case, a guy sponsored, but the is the beneficiary. Of course he can make tumura. T- 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 Amalis, he says, no, it's not so clear. Hassan, because very different than your case. We're both sponsor and beneficiary of Yisrael. So I can understand that Tumura is applicable. Hassan, Muduka Asi, Mikayach Yisrael. In fact, as Shimon who's getting the Kapara is coming from Ruvain, who's also Yisrael. So both the sponsor and the beneficiary are Yisrael. So in that case, of course, we focus on the beneficiary. We say, look, it came from Yisrael. It's going to Yisrael. Of course, it's Tmura. So it started and ended in the hands of Yisrael, which means to say, it never left Yisrael domain. And of course, Tmura applies. But here, in our case, it was introduced by a guy. The question is as follows. If it was introduced by a guy, so the initiation is tamura free. Do we focus on that? Or do we say, look, ultimately, its destination is the Kapara of Yisrael. Perhaps that changes the nature of the carbon and allows it tamura. Me Bani, do we require mitchila v'atzayf, the take of Yisrael, manda of it that from beginning to end, mitchila v'atzayf, the take which should be found by Rishus in the domain, under the auspices of manda of a person who can make tamura, meaning Yisrael, or maybe it's enough that the beneficiary is a Yisrael. And since Tamura applies to him, it applies to his carbon as well. So basically, do we label it as a carbon Yisrael? Does it identify with the Mishaper? Is that enough? Or do we have to reckon with the sponsor as well, who's a guy? In which case, it's Tamura free. Take it with even a result. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap. It's now. Terror warns against doing the Tmura process, but if you should do it, the original and the copy become Kaidish. Who has the power to make it Tmura? Anoshim and Anoshim. Anoshim is learned from a special Pasuk. What about a Yerush? That's a Machlaikis. If the Rabbi says no, Ramir says yes. What about a Katan? 
if it's Higiel um, Enes Nadarim, that was a question, what about a, a guy? So the, uh, the carbon of a guy in itself will certainly be Tzmura free, but what about if the guy is sponsoring Israel's carbon? He left it as an unresolved question. Okay, all the best to you, Psyrus Taivais, and Hatzlacha Rabba.